Surprise, surprise, I'm going back to university. Welcome back to another Chat Chat. In this video, I'm pretty much gonna be giving you a life update. This is pretty much going to be an update on what I'm doing, what I've done, and kind of what I'm going to be doing in the future as well. And also I'm gonna give you a bit of an insight into the challenges that I'm currently facing at the moment and what I'm going through. So this video is pretty much going to be almost like a video diary in a way. You're just gonna get a bit of an insight into my life, what I'm feeling at the moment. So if you're interested in knowing a little bit more about me, then this is the video for you. So go grab a beverage and let's get into it. I'm currently at a really interesting stage in my life. I'm 24, I'm living at home with my mom and my brother. And to be honest, I'm like really enjoying it. I think a lot of people move out because they feel like they don't have that freedom of expression, freedom of identity that they can get um, if they were to move out. And I'm quite lucky at the start of the pandemic, my family actually managed to get a place. And then we've just had pretty much two and a bit years to fully enjoy it, to make it our own. We've got my own room, I've got my own studio. Like it's like, it's just a really good time here for me personally. And I find that because I've got, so like I feel like if we were still at the old place, I would have moved out by now. But because, you know, this place that we have now, it's, it's a lot bigger. Um, I just feel like I've got kind of my own space that I can deal with things. I can just be myself. I can enjoy it. It's just been so much more of a better experience. It's really nice also not paying rent and like, you know, like mum's food's like the best. So it's, um, it's just nice just being at home. Plus my favorite gym is like five minutes away from here. So it's like, if I, like, oh, like even just me thinking about it and talking about it, I'm just feeling really grateful for the current place that I'm in at the moment. Um, so yeah, life at the moment, it's quite, it's quite interesting. I've also been feeling a general sense of calmness and fulfillment in the more, in the more recent weeks. Um, and I think that's largely because like, I've, I've been a little bit more grateful for where I am in life. Um, I do recognize that like the work that I do, it's incredibly fulfilling. Like, I don't feel like it's draining or soul crushing in any sense at all. Um, so I think I'm quite blessed to have and be doing work where I wake up on Monday morning and I actually look forward to going into work because I know I'm going to be making an impact or I know someone's life may be better because I either did a seminar or did a presentation or a workshop. And so kind of knowing that it's just like, it's just making me feeling, it's making me feel really grateful and really fulfilled. Speaking of the work that I currently do, I play three roles at the moment. I work as a speaker, facilitator and YouTuber as well. I say YouTuber because I feel like my ability and the my experience with identi identifying with that identity of being a YouTuber has really helped me just be consistent um, and really like keep an eye out for those moments that I feel like are worthwhile sharing with you. Um, so I do I do take this like as a very serious and considerate part of my life, even though for the most part this more so feels like a bit of a hobby. Um, and I don't want to, I'm very conscious of the fact that like I don't want to kind of make it feel like a lot of work, even though it if you look at it from the outside, it looks like it is. Um, but it's also a bit of a hobby, but I still take it as kind of part of the work that I do. But anyway, the other two jobs that I do, so I, I'm i currently contracted as a speaker, predominantly to a company called Success Integrated. I've been there ever since I pretty much left high school. Um, it's how I got into speaking in the first place. And I'm like, I'm really, really thankful and grateful for the opportunity because I feel like there's no way that I'd have the speaking like repertoire of skills that I currently have now. Nor would I be able to do like videos like this if I hadn't had that training, had that experience at Success Integrated. So the work that I currently do there is a pretty much a seminar presenter. So I go to schools and I predominantly speak to students, sometimes parents and teachers, but I talk on topics around growth mindset, resilience, um, leadership study skills, careers, and like a bunch of random other things. It's essentially like our, our programs are essentially so holistic in a sense where if, for example, you, you take um, a study skill seminar, you give a student the ability to believe in themselves. And when you give them the belief and then you couple it with the tools and you put that together, then it's gonna create a really holistic learning experience where the students believe they can do really well and they can actually know what they need to do and have the tools necessary in order to get the results that they want in whatever form or fashion. And so I find a lot of fulfillment in that work. And it's so much fun. Like we have a DJ in our programs as well, which just makes it so much more exciting. Um, plus how else do you keep uh, young people involved and engaged in a program now where our attention span apparently is three seconds. 
um, that's like a fully grown out adult. I can't, I don't know, I don't know what it would be like for about, oh no, eight seconds for an adult and I think three seconds for a teenager. I don't know, let's just go with the, let's just go with the bigger one. The eight seconds, let's say it's eight seconds attention span for an adult. I have no idea what it would be like for a teenager given that we have all these apps and like, that are like, you know, instantaneous gratification, left, right and center and like grabbing attention, letting go of attention, you know, TikTok and Instagram reels and all that. The seminars that I deliver have anywhere between 10 to like over 300 students involved in it sometimes. Um, so it's, it de really depends on what program it is and how big the year level is. There was a point in time where, you know, when I first started out working at this company because I wasn't doing much else, I had like a uni on the side, like I was studying commerce in Melbourne and that too, it was like 12 contact hours. So I had like heaps of time throughout the week to deliver programs, train and like learn all these seminars. So I was predominantly doing that when I was um, when I was in university. And because I had just an abundance of time, I was taking on a few other roles, like making a few calls and, you know, creating workbooks and all that, and even like designing a few programs. And like now that role has kind of changed a lot. I'm specifically only doing seminars, which is, I think it's been, it's been a bit, a bit of a different experience um, because it means that I, I go out to a school, deliver a program and come straight home. And it just means that like that work, that work day ends up being like really segmented. And I think for my mind and my mental health, it's been extremely beneficial because it means that I can leave my work outside and when I come home, I can engage in my family life, my spiritual life, my personal life, and a lot, in, in, a, in a lot more better sense, in a way that I feel like is a lot more, a lot, a lot more healthy for me. And I mention that because in our field, sometimes it can be very difficult to segregate and segment our lives, like work life and family life, and, and all that, um, social life, and all that. And I feel like. It, 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 uh, it, it's predominantly because you know that work is it's based around self-development it's, it's based around self-improvement and, and all that and so it kind of does play into your life and all that. like we speak about believing in yourself and like to separate that from your personal life it's very very difficult so in that sense that is also obviously a good thing that you wouldn't want to separate because it's making you believe in yourself a lot more but that the work aspect of it having this separation has just been so much better for me. Plus it also gives me that freedom to work on other things that I wanna work on, whether it be this YouTube channel, or whether it be working on my fitness and um, and whatnot. And also like allows me to do like other types of work as well. So the other company that I work out is a company called The Man Cave. And I applied for that job last year in 2021, I believe, at around about April. Um, it was a really, like it was almost like a dream come true. Um, it was a it was a time when work was in a sense very scarce, and so this was something that would have been like really perfect. And on top of that, it was meaningful work as well. Like it's for a cause that is very much important and present in society as well. Um, like men's mental health, healthy masculinity, consent. Like it was very much topics and things that are trending um, within the world and especially in Australia as well. So it was like. You know, being like, getting more work, um, which means getting more income, but then also adding a layer of meaning, purpose, and fulfillment on top of that as well, which is just like I'm speaking about it now. I'm like, I am very, very, very blessed to have done work in companies where we literally help people um, at a, on, a, on like a first hand basis. Like, it is such a beautiful experience. So as I mentioned before, the Man Cave is essentially a company where we predominantly work with those that identify as male. We also have other people in our workshop as well. Like it's quite, it's quite, quite flexible workshops that we run. Um, but we navigate conversations around mental health, healthy masculinity, um, consent, emotional intelligence. Um, and I don't know if I mentioned this, but like not only mental health, but like preventative, like specifically the preventative side of things so that we stop the problem from happening in the first place. And I think that like that's the way that we should be going. And then like I feel like you know more people need to invest in those methods because like in my own experience, even how I navigate my own life, like I think a lot of young people, what we do is is we only fix things when things have gone wrong. We don't put things in place um, to stop us to stop things from going wrong. Like we'll only think and reflect on you know what it is that we want to do in life when we get extremely confused or we make a stupid decision. Or, you know, we only realize that this person's not right for us when the relationship falls apart. We only see things in hindsight. 
And then I think if we put preventative measures in place, whether it be for our mental health or whether it be, you know, reflection, introspection and putting all these practices into place so that when we do come, come up with difficult decisions or difficult situations in our life, we actually have the tools necessary already within us to face those challenges in life and come out on top and face it with a lot more happiness, a lot more readiness and a lot more preparedness so that we don't get, you know, we don't, we don't get broken apart, but instead we get fulfilled and we get challenged and we get empowered by all these different um, situations that we end up facing. Like what I'm sharing with you right now is a very small part of the cave. Like it is so much more bigger. And if you wanna know more about it, I'll leave a link in the description below in this video so you can have a look and see what, it, what it's like. Um, and see like all the different amazing work that we're doing. Another thing that I wanted to share with you um, that's like, that I kind of hid for a very long time was a job that I applied for towards the end of last year and I literally just finished um, at the end of January. And I, I worked at Apple for a little bit. Like, yes, like the, like the Apple company, like iPads, uh, like Apple Watches, iPhones and all that. Like I worked at that company in the retail, in the retail sector. Um, and I kept it on the download. I didn't want to say anything about it because I didn't want people messaging me being like, can you get me this, can you get me that? Or like, I just didn't want to create that whole, uh, I don't know. I think it was, a, it was very much a, like, I don't have that conversation like a million times sort of, sort of thing. Like, oh my gosh, you work at Apple, you know? Can you get me this? What's it like? Now that, I've like, that it's like over and done with, I'm really happy to like share that with you. Um, it was a really good experience. Like the, the whole purpose of me like applying for it was because like I knew that usually at the end of the year, we end up going to India for a camp with a bunch of other amazing people. And because we weren't gonna travel anywhere and it's because school holidays and both the Man Cave and Success Integrated, predominantly their work is in like during school times. And so school holidays, I have like no work at all. I was like, I'm not gonna, I don't wanna like, be stuck at home with no income, binge watching Netflix and occasionally making the YouTube video. Like I wanna make sure that, you know, I be a little bit productive with my time. And if I can get a job at Apple, it means I can also upgrade my devices as well. So I did just that. And thankfully I got in, managed to get the role, got a five month contract. And it was a really interesting experience. Like I never worked in retail before. Um, and so I think having that experience, working with customers, working with a larger team, what it's like, and, um, and that too, kind of like on the better side of retail, so I, I don't feel like I got the kind of grunt work end of it, um, was a really pleasant experience. And my favorite part of it, other than the discounts, was definitely the people. And I think if you ask anyone, like they're gonna give you that same answer. Like it's the people that are always really, really good. And like, it may even sound cliche, like, oh, you know, the people of the place are the best, you know, screw this or screw that. But like people, that's where it's at. And it literally was like I met so many amazing people like I think the way that like it's really interesting because I feel like everyone at Apple other than the work that they were doing there like other than working at Apple retail they had other areas of their life that was just so interesting like I met people that are just so much more than people just working at Apple like these guys are like they're amazing like they do so many different things so some of them are singers some of them are like music producers some of them are like artists like it's like it is crazy what they do. And plus like some of them are just so generally loving and kind. Um, and it's just, it was just really, really nice. Leaving that company was actually a really difficult decision to make. I didn't actually think it was gonna be difficult because I was like, I knew going in that it was, this was only gonna be a short, it's like a short time period that I was gonna be here. But I actually enjoyed it that much. Um, where towards the end, I was like, man, do I actually wanna go? Like it's safe, it's secure, like it's a extremely wealthy company. Discounts are amazing, people are good. So like leaving that company was a really difficult decision to make. Um, but now that I've left and it's been about a month and a bit, like I'm, I'm happy that I did because I know like there's, for me, there's more fulfillment in other things of my life. But I'm extremely grateful for that time period, that five months where I had work when I generally wouldn't have worked. And yeah, I got to, I got to experience what it was like working at pretty much one of the wealthiest companies in the world. All right, so I recognize this is probably gonna be a really long video um, now that I'm going through it, but I hope you're still here with me. I'm gonna be showing you now like what I'm planning to do next now. And surprise, surprise, 
I am going back to university. And to be honest, I cannot believe it myself. Like I didn't think I'd be going back to university and studying again, like maybe really later on down the track, but I didn't think I'd be going back so soon, especially for what I think might be a really long time. I'm actually gonna be going back to university and studying psychology. Now, for those of you that know me, that like that have like had a conversation with me, I think you you must know how much I hated studying psych in the past. I started it in 2019 and I just found it to be the most frustrating, annoying thing on this planet. Um, like even now when I'm thinking about it, I'm getting fired up and angry about it because like, oh, anyway, I just feel like, you know what? I'm not gonna get into that. Maybe one day later on the track, we'll get into it. But I wanna, I wanna, let's stick to the happy side of things. I'm actually looking forward to going back to university and studying. And like when I started it in 2019, um, psychology, I did two subjects and I just found it, like I, I did not like it at all. So I left. And I think at that point in 2019, it was one of the hardest things I've ever done. I think I was 20, or 20, 20, 20, so I was 21 at the time. I don't think I was that emotionally mature at 21. Um, and I think coupling that with the fact that I just kind of like, I don't know, I was just, I was just so torn. Like I didn't, didn't want to do anything. Um, and I might've been burnt out from my first degree commerce. And so I probably perhaps just needed a bit of a break. Just wanted to work and travel for a little bit. And I think when I went back to university in 2019 to study psychology, I wasn't ready for it then. And when I quit, that was one of the hardest things I ever did because I think I was someone that personally always prided myself on. Um, when I start something, I finish it. Like even my degree, like the first six months of my degree, I hated it. Like literally first year, first semester of uni, I did not like it at all. But one of the things that I made sure that I did was I started it and I finished it. And I can proudly say with confidence that I've like, you know, I finished a university degree. I know too many people my age that jump from university degree to university degree over and over and over again. They accumulate heaps of death. Death, sorry, my bad. Heaps of, that came out wrong. They get, accumulate heaps of debt and end up never really accomplishing anything other than just finishing year 12. And I think the confidence that you get when you actually complete a university degree is so much more significant than, than it is than if you just finished year 12. And I think, you know, although I paid 30 grand for confidence, I still feel like the most part, feel like it was worth it. Like I was studying a degree that didn't have many contact hours, so it allowed me to do all this other work and train as a speaker and get extremely good at it. So from that angle, it was extremely beneficial. Although I'm not doing much of my degree at all, it definitely helped in terms of confidence and the personal prestige that I felt having gone to Melbourne University and then engaging with all these different other areas of my life and wanting to inspire people to have clarity, to make decisions about their future. So in that sense, it, it helped a lot. And then leaving was really, really, really hard. I felt like in a way I was almost failing. Like it was like, I'm a failure because I'm giving up on something that I've enrolled in and something that I should be doing. And I remember talking to a good mate of mine, Josh Smythe, um, and he was sharing that sentiment with me. He's like, man, like, actually quitting can be one of the hardest things. And at that point it was. And I, like I got over it for a bit. And what's kind of led me to this decision um, to like to study psychology again, I think it's because I'm at a, like, I'm at a point where, you know, like I'm living at home. Um, I'm loving living at home. I'm, you know, working those two jobs, success integrated in a man cave. And I don't feel like as if, if I start, if I stayed here, if I continued doing what I'm doing at the moment, I don't think it'd have as much career progression. And so it felt like studying something would have been the next step. And if anything, the last two years being stuck at home for the majority of it has taught me anything. It's the fact that, you know, the years are gonna pass by anyway. So what is two years? What is three years? What is four years? What is what is five years in the grand scheme, grand scheme of things? Now, you, I know I might be saying these things and you might feel like, oh my gosh, that's actually heaps of time. You're, like, You're right, it is heaps of time but it's gonna pass anyway. And I wonder whether or not, like I did that, I've spoken about this before, but that Odyssey plan, where you ask yourself those three questions, like if you were to do, I can't remember exactly what it is, I did it a while ago now. Um, but if you were to like, um, if you were to do what you were keep on, kept on doing for the, in like, what would your life look like? Essentially, what would your life look like in five years time if you kept on doing what you're doing? Um, and the second question would have been like, what would you, 
what would your life look like in five years time if you were to do something else other than what you're currently doing um like your plan b and then what would you what would your life look like in five years time if money um status and like all that stuff wasn't something that you needed to worry about and like like in that screen in that scheme of things five years can look like a lot and I just wonder whether or not, you know, by the time, like five years time would be like 29, 30, would I want to have a psych degree behind me or would I not? And if I didn't, what would it look like? And if I did, what, my life, what would my life look like? So I asked myself questions like that, what, like, and based on those projected outcomes that I kind of saw, then I made my decision based off that. And to be honest, I feel like I'm, I feel like I'm, like I said, like, I feel like I'm ready for it. Like I am genuinely looking forward to studying psychology um and like it doesn't seem like it's not an excitement where it's like yeah i'm like so ready i'm motivated i'm keen for it it's just like oh this is what's next for me and for the most part it just feels right it's really interesting and reflective that i've come to this point where i'm like yeah i'll study psychology because it was something that's always been in the back of my mind and i just either ignored it or i looked at it and i hated it and i spoke about how much i hated it and then that was it and i like just not act on it and then i just let it be and one other thing that i wanted to mention here was that um i just felt like being at the age of 24 now studying psychology i just feel like a lot more emotionally aware of myself um, and I just feel like I have a lot more life experience. And so I have a lot more to offer, not only to the course, but then also to myself and the mindset that I go in studying this degree and what I want the outcome to look like. And if I think about purpose and the work that I do to have the best impact on the world around me at a larger scale and work on bigger projects in the future, I truly feel like if I have this behind me, then it might make that, it actually might be the one thing might be the thing that I need in order to kind of get that extra level up. Not that it's a complete necessity, but I definitely feel like it's the right step in kind of making that impact, not only in a research sense, but in um, in like a lives impacted sense. All right, now before we move on to the challenges that I'm facing, I thought it'd be worthwhile sharing with you um, someone else that you may, 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 may not have met. If you've been watching the vlogs, you will, you would see this little dog um, in, the, in, the, in the videos. Her name is Nala. She's a multi Shih Tzu. And we got her, I think about four months ago now. So she's really young. She's still a little puppy. And she just, she just got groomed today. So that's why she's got like a bow and everything on her. Um, but yeah, she's like really small and cute. You'll be definitely seeing more of her. Anyway, I better put her down so we can get to the rest of this. Ugh. Okay, yes. <laughs> All right, so there's a few challenges that I'm currently feeling and going through at the moment. Um, and one of the bigger things is, you know, will, will I be able to manage everything? And that's crossed my mind because like going into studying, I know this is gonna be a big commitment. Um, it's looking like it's gonna be a really long time. Like I have to do a, an equivalent of an undergraduate degree, which is a graduate diploma. I'm studying at Monash University and that's gonna take a year. And then afterwards, it's probably gonna be honors and it's probably gonna be masters if I choose to do pretty much the whole track of everything. And so like, I know I'm gonna be studying for a really long time. And I just wonder, I'm like on top of man cave, I'm on top of, you know, like speaking and success and degraded and stuff, if I'm gonna be able to manage all of it. And I personally think I can handle it. And the reason why I feel like that is because towards the end of last year, I did like, it, it was really tough. I was working at Man Cave, I was working at Success Integrated, I was working at Apple, which was ridiculous. Like Apple was giving me like a heaps of shifts. So I was extremely busy. I was still making YouTube videos, pretty much still uploading like once a week. So I was pulling like, I think well over 60 hours a week working, um, probably even a little bit more, 65, closer to 70. And so I think the fact that I did all of that towards the end of last year for a good few months, I think it just proved to me just what I can do um, and how much I can handle and just like, just how much responsibility and um, and things that I actually can take on and not fall apart. And so now not having Apple and like only having like what I have at the moment and then adding the studying on top of this, I don't think it'd be too bad, but I'm still slightly a little bit worried about whether or not I'll be able to manage everything. I don't wanna not have to go to the gym or take a day off here or there. Like I, st I, w I still wanna have those days to rest and rejuvenate. Um, but we'll see how we go and I'll definitely keep you updated. Another challenge that I feel like I'm currently facing as well is this idea of like comparison. And I know it's like, I've spoken about this before and like, you know, comparison is the thief of joy. 
um, as the saying goes. And like, like in, in some extent it's, it's right. And so I've always been told, you know, instead of comparing yourself to other people, you know, compare you to who you were the day before. I definitely believe there is some merit in that, but sometimes it can get extremely difficult. And I think in some sense as well, it can actually be really good to compare yourself to other people just to get, just to get an idea and a sense of where you should be in life. Like if you're like, let's say for example, that you're in university and all your, all your friends got clarity on what it is that they want to do in the future and you don't like naturally your comparison would feel like, oh crap. Everyone else knows what they want to do in life and I have no idea. And like, fair enough, that might make you feel like crap. And you can go two ways. You can be like, you know, I've learned so much over the past couple of years. I'm a lot more clear than what I used to be. Or you could go to the other end and be like, you know what? They've got a lot more clarity about, the, about their future. So that means I should probably figure out what I should be doing with my future and get clarity for me. So you can use comparison in a very negative sense where you feel like you're coming out of insecurity and comparing yourself to other people that way. Or you can use comparison in a, like, in what I think, in a healthy sense and be like, you know what? This is actually inspiring. Like me right now, compared to where people my age are currently at, um, I should probably be trying to hit these goals. Like that's give me, that gives me an idea, a sense of where I want to be at the moment. And you can, so you can use it like that. I don't know, just see however you want to do it. That's kind of how I'm feeling it at the moment. Um, and another thing that I'm finding challenging is trying to make better content and being able to manage that along with everything else that I want to do. How do I make it more interesting? How do I make it a lot more aesthetic? How do I make you guys feel like you're a lot more involved? How do I like, how do I just make sure that your needs are being hit and these are videos that you want to watch without compromising on integrity. Because I feel like it, the easy way for me to make a video would be to make a video on what's trending at the moment and then me have complete dissociation between what I, what content I actually want to make and content just for make, making content for the, sense, for the sake of views. And I think the only reason why that I've been led to that thought is because it's, it's hard to grow on a platform like this. It's hard to go on like on Instagram, it's hard to grow and really um, start getting that like content wheel churning and then also seeing the outcome from it. It's not lost to me on the fact that, you know, it's hard, it's hard to continue when you don't see results. And like, that's my own challenge, to be honest, like that's my own sort of personal reflection on it. Um, and I don't want to get too caught up in it either. Like, I don't want to, like, I don't want to lose the authenticity of the channel and myself for the sake of chasing um, almost what would be considered like, you know, the um, vanity metrics. Like I don't wanna lose the authenticity on this channel just for the sake of vanity metrics. And yeah, so making quality content and like what that's gonna look like coming forward is going to be a bit of a challenge. It's going to be really interesting. It's definitely gonna take a lot more time, but it's also something I'm looking forward to. Um, situation is not a problem. It's just a situation. So we'll make it work. Another challenge that I'm currently thinking about, more so of a reflection piece, is like society's milestones. Like the whole thing that, you know, you finish up high school, go to uni, and you get a nice job, get a nice partner, get married, have kids, and like that whole like storyline, which I feel like has a lot of merit in it. I mean, there's literally nothing wrong with that at all. I just find it really interesting. And like, cause I feel like my life has completely gone almost opposite that. Not opposite, but it's been within that, but very strayed in extreme senses. And like, it's just more of a reflection thing for me. And how does me being an adult look like in this sense? Because I don't have a job that's like extremely secure and has an extreme and confident future at the end of it. Um, and I'm going back to studying. Like, it's just something that's extremely present with me at the moment. And the last challenge, and one that I kind of haven't really figured out yet, is what do I actually want from my life? Like even like asking, saying that question out loud, like what do you, well, let me ask you, like what do you want from your life? And there's times when so many things just flood my mind. Like I want this, I want that, I want this, I want that. And there's times when I just ask myself that question and my mind just goes silent. The answer to that question, like, you know, you can do as many odyssey plans, you can do as much reflection as you want. And you will get answers that way. And like, I just wonder, you know, is there something more? Um, like, is there more that I could be doing? Is there more that I could be offering? Is there greater things that I could end up working towards? Um, 
yeah, just, just kind of just sitting with that. So this is the this is the life update. It's been like a lot of things have changed. A lot of things have also stayed the same. Um, currently, like at the moment, I'm still working at Success Integrated. I'm still doing the man cave stuff. It's just that this week, the, literally the week that this video gets released, I'm going to be studying psychology. And, and yeah, that that's pretty much life update. If you like this video, let me know. And if you have any advice or like any thoughts that you want to share with me, please reach out. Like whether it be on Instagram, whether it be in the comment section below, like let me know. I want to hear your thoughts, what you think, um, because I'm really open to learning. And as you can see, like I'm like I'm making all these decisions. Sometimes I'm, I might be a little bit uncertain and unsure, but I genuinely think that that's a, that's a normal part of life and no one has all the answers. Um, but some of your answers and some of the things that you might share with me might bring a lot of value. And so I'd, I'd love to know. If you enjoyed the video, make sure you like it and make sure you subscribe to the channel. If you wanna see more of these videos, let me know as well. It'd be awesome to make more stuff like this. It's just a very interesting and very um, personal chai chats. So I guess I'll be seeing you in the next video. Catch you later, bye.